Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and have I got an interesting report to share with you, specifically in regards to the New World Order World Government Summit uh, that just took place a couple of days ago, just in the month of February of 2017. Now, they've got a radical agenda on the table, one in which includes a cashless society, driverless cars, uh, increased technology, the typical things pushed by some of these New World Order components and uh, globalists and I believe what you're about to see on this report is rather jaw-dropping and this is all done despite the fact that we have a huge movement of nationalism we have Donald Trump taking the rise uh, here in America as well as global uh, global uh, global establishment being decreased at least that's what we're seeing and this is a huge fight back. Uh, but we also see things like Brexit happening. And then we have Marie Le Pen, uh, over there also rising up to, um, well, hopefully push the nationalist agenda there in France. Well, let's take a look at this website because this is huge. And, uh, just when you see some of the speakers and, uh, everything in a nutshell, you're going to see the new world order fighting back to the brim. Let's go there. All right, so here's the website for starters, worldgovernmentsummit.org. Uh, and you can see that up here. It happened February 12th through the 14th of 2017. Anytime we have a summit with the title World Government, these are things we need to pay attention to. But as you can see here, front and center, they have a few globalist quotes from the get-go. You just saw one by Barack Insane Obama, even though he is no longer president. But he says, together we can ensure that more of our children get the education that prepares them for the global economy. Notice he doesn't say American economy, but he pushes the global agenda. And he says that economic growth is inclusive and that more communities can do their part to protect our planet. They call him honorable. I call him not so honorable. And they need to put the word former in front of his name. But either way, he here obviously isn't out for the American people. That's your proof. He's out for the globalist people. And what ticks me off even more is they're trying to accuse Donald Trump of not being a for America, saying he's a Russian agent, which isn't even true. Meanwhile, we have people like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton who have sold out to the global economy and care not for the American economy. But needless to say, there's other quotes here uh, from speakers all around the world, once again, pushing the global agenda. All right, so here's the summit in a nutshell. They had over 90 speakers. I'm gonna show you some of those speakers. Over 4,000 attendees and participants from over 130 countries. You can see here on the front page, Here's some of the speakers, but I'm gonna get into that in a moment, but this is Dubai, we know Elon Musk, IMF, uh, World Bank here, and uh, but I'm gonna go back and get into them. But what is this organization? Well, for starters, here's just a quick Wikipedia uh, thing on what the World Government Summit is all about, but it is a United Arab Emirates based international organization that serves as a platform for global dialogue, attempting to revolutionize how governments operate and how policies are made. When they say revolutionize governments, they mean uh, reintegrate international policies and laws versus per the country. So in other words, nationalism, caring about your own country gets the back seat, globalism gets the front seat. The organization's vision is to aid humanity at large. It aims to empower governments, grow governments, get bigger governments uh, for the future with ultimate objective of improving the lives of 7 billion people. And I have to say that's a bunch of bull because they don't plan on improving our lives. Nowhere in history does it show a global organization improved the lives of humanity. I can fair yet that that's probably not the case, even though they claim it is. Remember, they do everything with a hint of good and then with a little poop in the pie, as I like to call. But the summit acts as a knowledge exchange hub between governments, futurism, technology, and innovation. It was created and incubated by a team of experts from different disciplines in an effort to bring government, business, and civil society 
together. Uh, hmm, interesting. But here is just a little more information. They put out documents. I've kind of skimmed through this one. This again is just pushing a uh, education global education. Can you imagine the curriculum? Who are we going to use? Are we going to use Saudi Arabia? Are we going to use Iran's? Are we going to use American education? Are we going to use Germany, France, or, you know, Japan? Who? China. Which one in this global education are we going to implement? And uh, let me just say that America would be giving up freedoms and brainwashing techniques would be incorporated in our children, pushing more of that. And this is just technological developments, uh, driverless cars, all that uh, in there as well. But let's get in to some of the speakers here. Let's go back. We know Elon Musk, he's uh, there, but the CEO of SpaceX, one of the speakers. We have Shaheek Mohammed bin Rashid, and he is the Vice President and Prime Minister of United Arab Emirates and ruler of Dubai. If you guys have, uh, I encourage everyone, if you have not, Google the city of Dubai. Uh, crazy stuff, antichrist type technology that I like to say. It's a very modern city. Uh, crazy stuff is surfacing out of there. And, and another thing on um, the New World Order here, this is something that Bible talks about hardcore, I believe, when it says that the Antichrist will rule over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Uh, that will form in the latter days. We have one Antichrist to rule them all. And then we also have... Um, you know, the, the formation of a new world order and the 10 nation kingdom, three which get taken over, all of this plays into these world organizations. But anyhow, Miss Christine Lagarde, we know she is the managing director for the IMF, Jim Kim, the World Bank. All of these are high time. Here's United Nations, Prime Minister and Minister of Presidential Affairs. Uh, we have Miss Helen Clark, Administrator for United Nations Development Program. Now, I'm not going to get into all of these because there are a ton. Here's the Prime Minister of Slovakia. Um, and moving on down here. But we also have, uh, here is Miss Kim Chantis. Uh, let me show you her. Uh, I'll have her somewhere in here. Uh -huh, there she is. Okay, she is BBC. Oh, yes. She writes a column for Foreign Policy Magazine li linked with uh, the, uh, well, <laughs> BBC. And here's another one, Richard Quest. He's also there. Richard Quest is CNN, foremost international business correspondent and anchor. Well, hello, CNN. We all know that they're a communist news network and they're in league with all of them. I got into him. He's the Slovakian guy there. Joseph Anun, he's the president, but not the president of anything but the Northern University, a, a university president there. Um, here's another. Uh, she is Tamako Kigawa, worked at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, learned the importance of promoting international cooperation and mutual understanding through her involvement in the activities of the World Bank Group and United Nations. Uh, here's another, Mr. Evan Bullfield, CEO and co-founder. Uh, obviously, he works with health, energy, transportation, and cities. He's a frequent contributors to Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, and the Huff Post. Again, more of this brainwashed media here. Patrick Murick, uh, he again is the Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University. There's a Harvard guy there. Uh, Jonathan Mattis, uh, I want to show you he is the CEO of Zen Drive, uh, but that's not all. Prior to that, he spent six years at Facebook and Google. Hmm. Focused on very mobile and speech recognition project. These speech recognition projects are the very things that target opposition, left opposition. And these, this one particular guy is speaking and uh, he's focused on very various, various speech recognition projects. This just, it's just I don't know. Here's another Sean Anchor. Uh, he spent 12 years at Harvard. Uh, he has become one of the world's leading experts between happiness and success. And he's featured on TED Talks. Uh, he's been aired on PBS and yada, yada. But um, there's just some of the other speakers there. And I'll kind of scroll through some of those for you to see. But I encourage everyone to go through here and look at them because there is a slew. Uh, even one of the oldest yoga masters. Why? Because it's all about a new world order agenda. 
with the New World Order agenda comes new age. All paths lead to heaven. All paths lead to God. And uh, they've also, that's their push. That's what they believe, which we know is just a lie straight from the pits of hell. Uh, but needless to say, there you have that and um, pushing that new world order. But that's the list of them. All right, now let's get into some of the partners that support this thing. And you're going to notice that all the partners are globalist organizations. Here's their main partners. IMF, of course, CLAD, uh, Dubai Fund for Development, the UN, can't get by without that stamp, the World Bank, OECD, World Economic Forum. Here's some secondary ones you can see here, uh, featured partners. And obviously, they're all donators. We have Harvard Business review what on earth uh, land rover jaguar hmm, hmm, hmm. and of course fake news network cnn now moving on i want to show you some of the reports that are issued at this particular event uh, you saw a few of those but one that i want to focus on and you can see the headlines here i mean all of these are global minded uh, global, how to globalize the future, how to make the internet, uh, glo all of it go global, 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 new world order, new world order. But one that I found particularly fascinating is the money one here. And I encourage everyone to skim it. It's not uh, that long of a report, but it says the future of money, back to the future, the internet of money. Here's just a quick headline of what it's on. But what I found in this report is that they are pushing 100% a cashless society. Coincidentally, this is the same thing that they spoke about at the Bilderberg meeting a couple of years ago. I believe it was 2015 where they actually had it posted that they wanted a cashless society. But let me show you some quotes here. Just uh, plug in cashless, this is one way to find it. But throughout the financial crisis, this is page seven and beyond, payment volumes have continued to rise while the ratio to cash to card and electric transactions has fallen, provoking a concerted policy drive towards releasing cashless economy in some markets, such as the UK and Scandinavia. When you read this report in its whole too, it really pushes uh, this big movement from Everybody, nobody deals with cash anymore. We just need to do away with cash and get this cashless society. But protecting transactions at much smaller levels will also help to accelerate the transition to a cashless society and drive financial inclusion, especially in poor rural economies. You can tell just from that sentence alone, uh, but if you need more evidence, read the entire report. Like I said, it's not too bad, but there you go. That is your admission to move into a cashless society. And who's at the front? The World Bank. Now, Back to this page, another good one is the global cities of the future. This gets into technology and moving people into big cities, having big cities, renewable energy, obviously putting money in the hands of more green green proponents, uh, getting rid of coal, all that stuff. This is Agenda 21 uh, as well. I mean, if you wanna label it, that is the only way, or Agenda 2030. Now, uh, transforming government services in the United Arab of Emirates. Uh, there's one as well. Embracing innovation in government. Oh, isn't that wonderful? You know, there's good and bad uh, on every side, but um, I've read through a few of these. I haven't read through all of them. Needless to say, those are some of the reports on this site. All right, moving on. Uh, back to the front page here. There's one more thing I wanted to show you here. It says five initiative launch launches as a result of this summit. Uh, the World Gover Textioneers Race, interesting. SDGs in action, that's 2017, obviously very uh, just started. Edge of Government and the Museum of the Future. Uh, what I want to show you first is this Museum of the Future. And notice this picture at the top. Notice right in the background, it looks to me, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but they have a city and then they have the city blowing up. Why uh, would you do that? Why would you put a city out and then show it? And here you go, watch it in its full, and boom. 
What is this about? Well, and then it has the words re-imaging climate change. And this is one that was birthed out of this world summit. Interesting thing there, but they say that the museum explores a future uh, in which we have not only survived and the challenges of climate change, but turn them into opportunities for the entire world. And then they talk about better food, water, and urban environments while you watch this city blow up. Needless to say, I, I thought that was just interesting. All right, one of the last things that I wanted to show you here is here under annual gathering, go to 2017 and click on programs. And this will show you some of the topics that were discussed. Uh, and a lot of them have to do with happiness on the global agenda. Where is happiness on the global agenda? The role of government to achieve happiness. I really don't think this is about happiness, but needless to say, uh, that is where, what they're calling it. Do you have the happy gene, get a happy brain, uh, development through closing the happiness gap through technology. Um, here's some others. Let me scroll. Uh, what is the role of cities in creating happiness? Uh, the challenges of globalism. Uh, obviously, they have challenges. And so in that one, they discuss the ways to overcome these challenges. Uh, and obviously, the movement of nationalism and how that, uh, well, is in their way. The making of extremism. Interesting. <laughs> interesting there. Uh, the power of play, innovation of future of governance. Uh, can our education system destroy talent? Uh, this one, global platform, innovation and the future of governance in collaboration. But you can see some of the topics here. Obviously, the World Bank there. Uh, changing, uh, surviving in an ever-changing world, speaking directly of the new world order there, the anatomy of the future, youth of the future, future of government in collaboration with the World Bank. Now, why would we need that? We shouldn't have anything to do with the World Bank. And here's uh, the IMF. Um, and on and on and on it goes. So just wanted to show you that this is just some uh, other stuff here as well. Um, uh, well, let me show you a, a last, a few last that I thought are important. Um, changing climate change and global food supply, the evolution of food. A lot of this was also on food, food revolution, designing a better future for food. And I'm sure that includes GMOs. And then, uh, is it the end of globalization? Uh, interesting one there. I've kind of skimmed that one. There wasn't too much on it. Uh, other than what the headline read there. So there you have it. But I encourage everyone to come back here, scan through some of the topics, and you'll get a huge idea of what the entire summit was about. So there you have it. Just wanted to show you the New World Order agenda and how they're still pushing and pushing and pushing through. We know they just had the summit in uh, Munich or the Munich summit there uh, just a few days ago as well. So these go back to back. We have the World Government Summit, then we have the Munich summit, and I'm sure attendants have attended both. We have high up leaders attending these globalist summit and everybody from Facebook to Google to Harvard to IMF to World Bank people. Uh, to prime ministers are attending such meetings, pushing the new world order agenda that the Bible specifically references and talks about. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ, now is the time to get to know him as your Lord and Savior, because who knows how much time before this antichrist system is implemented. Your new world order where 10 kings rise, three are taken out. Needless to say, this is the earmarks of uh, this world government summit, world government. Who needs a world government? We don't need one here in America because we would, as Obama said, have to give up our sovereignty. And let me warn you, it won't be just a small portion. It will be a huge chunk of sovereignty because who else is, uh, you know, you have to give up some of your rights in order to be an international good global citizen. You see? And that's what it's headed. It's the ultimate power grab from the ultimate 
ones pulling the strings at the top. So just a forewarning there. And, and look, whether or not uh, this, obviously Donald Trump knows about these meetings, all presidents do because they happen on a yearly basis. But needless to say, I, you know, I wonder what steps are, is he going to take in the future? These meetings are happening and uh, Donald Trump, people like Donald Trump are rising into power who are anti new world order. Or at least that's what he uh, campaigned on uh, somewhat. We have Marie Le Pen standing up. We have Nigel Farage standing up. Donald Trump. Uh, we had Brexit happening and other uh, countries talking about doing the same. I know Netherlands is another one as well. Uh, but needless to say, this big nationalism movement is the enemy. And that was addressed in this meeting along with their cashless society, along with their global curriculum, along with their new world order mindset and mentality. Anyhow, just wanted to bring you the latest on all of that. Please don't forget, I'm going to be attending the Hear the Watchman conference on March 31st through April 2nd. Now is the time to get your tickets for that. Uh, it's it's in Dallas, Texas. It's going to be an amazing time. I'm going to be there and be the MC along with tons of other people. I think L.A. Marzulli, Paul Bagley, um, John B. Wells and uh, Eric and uh, uh, Sharon or Sharon Gilbert uh, are going to be there too. So lots of amazing people. So make sure you come check that out and use the code Haven uh, for twenty dollars off the price. And I'll leave information below on that. Also, don't forget to check out Noble Gold Investments. I have two silver coins here. Pretty awesome. You can see. Uh, there, the silver coin. This is one ounce silver, and you can get these at noblegoldinvestment.com. Lots of great stuff uh, with that, and it's always good to have gold and silver on hand. Just my personal belief in that. So noblegoldinvestments.com. And finally, don't forget to check out Protovite, havenshealth.com uh, for all your Protovite needs. And, and Protovite is, um, along with Get the Tea, uh, Protovite is one of my absolute favorite products along with get the tea the life change tea at www.getthetea.com but havenshealth.com has the protovite and it is literally changes your blood uh, from a, a clotty kind of version if you look under a microscope to more free flowing and in a sense it rejuvenates all your organs so make sure you check that out as well anyhow thanks again for tuning in this is lisa haven signing out